Hello there guys, uh, and as promised, uh, I did a question and question video, basically not so long ago, asking what people's thoughts were on doing uh, SketchUp tutorials. Um, overwhelmingly, the responses were yes. Uh, I did have some suggestions for other 3D modeling software, but unfortunately I've not even, I've not touched that software. Maybe I'll take a look into it and get some stuff out there once I can figure that out. But today I'm just going to go over, I'm not going to do a tutorial as such, we're just going to take a look at the tools, what they do, how that you can use them getting SketchUp set up basically uh, and I'll instantly upload another video after this and we'll, we'll take a look at making simple shapes, extruding, push-pull, removing lines, drawing etc. So this video we're basically just going to take a look at setting up and how I set it up. Now I'm using SketchUp Make here, there's like a pro version of it, you see I'm on the pro trial here. Um, basically the pro trial allows you to export it as an FBX which is what Unreal Engine 4 uses. Uh, Unreal Engine 4 users, not as in users and user. Wow, okay, I messed that up. Anyway, Unreal Engine 4 takes advantage of FBX files, um, but without Pro, you can't export as FBX. You export as a .dae or a Collada file. And then I'll show you a free tool at the end of this video that we use to convert that to an FBX. So I'm going to jump straight in here and we're going to take a look around the program. So when you come in, we've got this guy here. Definitely looks like Stanley, don't you think? It's, it's definitely Stanley. I've had a bit of a debate about this, but he is definitely Stanley. Um, and you can use him for some kind of sizing reference, although to be honest, you can scale everything in engine in engine within Unreal Engine 4. So there's not really any need to have him here for scale. So we can just go ahead and delete him straight out. Um, so let's take a look at some of the tools. I mean, the selection tool is obvious. You use it to click on things. The eraser tool erases things. The pencil tool. Now, this is a thing is interesting. So I can select this origin point here. Now, where these three axes meet, the Z axis, the Y and the X, I think the red is the X and the green is the Y, X, Y and Z axis. Now, this point here is where in Unreal Engine 4, when you move uh, a 3D object around, you get those little arrows, right, that you can drag along the green, red and blue axis. Now, this is where that those arrows will be. So, for example, if I make a cube here, when I move this around in Unreal Engine 4, it, it will uh, those little arrows will appear here you know those little arrows will be there to move it around let me see if I can uh, demonstrate that no okay but it, it will move like this from that bottom corner now if I'd have built it if I'd have built that let's go ahead and build that again just to explain that a bit better if I build this kind of rectangle here when I go ahead and move this in Unreal Engine 4 it's going to uh, oh oh dear okay I'm supposed to do that it will move around the center point, you know. Uh, I hope I've explained that right. But basically, yeah, origin means origin. That's where that's where the uh, zero 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 of your three D model is going to be. So you always kind of want to build around this X, not not around it. You want this on a corner of it so you can move it in the real engine. It doesn't matter too much, but I thought I'd figure stop and explain what the origin there is. So you have the pencil tool. I quickly demonstrate that there, so you can draw a line here, a line here. And draw lines along these axes and I can connect them up to make a, a, a kind of 2D panel. Um, now one of the things I'm going to quickly demonstrate is you see these two sides look not too dissimilar in colour. Well actually if I was to load this up in engine and if I was to stand on this side of the wall I would see a solid wall. If I stood here I, w I, would, I wouldn't see anything I'd see straight through it. That's because uh, models are made up of faces. Now faces can either have uh, a, a reversed face or a correct face and you want all of your correct face to be in the outside of your model. So let's let's take a look for example. Let's um, quickly construct a cube. Hopefully I can explain faces better with this. So this is a cube, right? Now inside here, let me scroll in. If I was to stand in here in game, I, would, I wouldn't see any part of the cube. I would just see out of it. I would see the landscape. I'd see whatever's around me. But from outside, I'd see a solid cube. Um, so one thing that, that you may notice, so let's just grab this and reverse the face. So on this side now, I'd see through it, whereas on this side, I'd see the cube. Now, the colors here aren't too, you know, you, it, you could mistake that for shading. So one thing that I always do when I'm working in SketchUp is heading over to uh, Window, Styles, Edit, and then select everything. It's, it's not that one. It's this one, the second one along. And the back color here so this, this this back face you can always see through so you don't want any of those to be visible on your 3d model so i always turn this to a really 
really a distinct colour, so bright red. So I, I always know, okay, wait a minute, there's a bright red face there, and I want people to see a solid cube, so I'm going to go ahead, right-click and reverse. Now people will see a solid cube, as opposed to seeing that. Um, so I hope that kind of explained faces really quick, uh, and I'll hop on, we'll cover this kind of thing more in detail as we're building models, but let's hop on back to over to the tools now. So you just saw a really quick use of the eraser tool there, you can erase single lines. Uh, to erase a face, you would select the face and just press the delete button. And you can see the red inside there. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, the next tool along, we have the arc tool here. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. If I make a point at the origin, make a point along the, uh, I think green's Y, and I can make an arc that expands up along the uh, Z axis there, or expands out flat along the X axis. And you can use that to make an arc, basically. Uh, if you want to connect the bottom up then, then you have a face that's a nice little arc. So... I mean, uh, half a log or something. Yeah. Um, so that's the curve tool. I mean, I don't know what, what else that you can me mention about a curve tool that makes curved lines instead of drawing all the curves in yourself. Um, I don't really use three-point arc, but these are basically just your arc tools. I really just stick with the two-point arc there. Uh, if you want to make a full circle instead of making two arcs on the next tool along you have rectangle or circles You know if you want to make a circle and drag that up and now you've got a full log as opposed to half a log um, Now this tool this is what you basically build Everything with this push-pull tool is God in SketchUp um, It does what it says on the tin it pushes and pulls faces so if I push this if I pull this face up here if I had to make another rectangle on here and I push this on through to the other side, I've made a hole for it. And if I want to expand the hole, I push it that way, I push it this way. But I kind of want uh, this side to be a bit lower so I can go like that. You know, this push pull tool, you, you will build everything with it. So get used to pushing and pulling things and sculpting them that way. It's a fantastic tool, it's really, really innovative and really easy to use. Uh, these next few tools, I'm going to skip, they're basically just movement tools to move things around, but um, yeah, which reminds me of one thing I have brushed over, navigation. Um, so you see I can rotate the camera here, what I'm doing there is I'm holding in my middle mouse button, so my middle mouse button allows me to rotate. I think if I hold it, if I hold uh, shift and use the middle mouse button, I can pan, so I can rotate and pan along the red axis here. Can rotate again pan along the green axis with holding sh so basically just using the shift and the middle mouse button there if you hold control you can kind of spin around a point and it, you know mess up the angles of everything really but then just to get out of that just rotate yourself normally again with the middle mouse button um okay looking at some other tools scale so let's take a look at scale so let's make a simple cube and then i say wait a minute i kind of want this face to be smaller than the rest i can grab it and I can use the scale tool to scale that down, make some kind of, make it come on down to a point kind of deal. Um, I could scale it that way, I could scale it up and down. So that's what the scale tool does, it scales faces, but as well as scaling a single face, it all, you can also use it to scale an entire object. So by highlighting it with the selection tool, grabbing scale, I can scale this whole cube up or down. I can stretch it in this way, I can stretch it out that way. Now imagine if this was a bit of a bit more of a complex model here. So let's um, go ahead and do that. Select the whole thing again and scale again. And you see it stretches everything out there. So we'll go ahead and delete that and move on to the next tool. This tool is uh, it's quite useful. Now if you if you want to be really precise, let's let's take a look at an example where you'd use the measurement tool. Let's go ahead and make a wall. Now if I say I want something. 10, you know, I want it, I want it halfway in. Now, one way you could do this would be to measure the entire thing. It's 40.98, half of that is 20.45 something, I don't know. And then you could go and find 20.45 something. Now, if you wanted it in the midpoint, another tool you can use is if you move this pencil along the line that you want to find the midpoint of, when you reach the midpoint, you'll see it snaps to it, and the a blue circle appears there, Let's see, so we can see that. You may want to put this in full screen HD or something, so you can see these. These are quite small details, but there's a little blue point there that is the midpoint. And if I was to hold that down the, the, down the blue axis, because we're working uh, on the Z axis here, 
that line is now in the dead center of that. If I was to measure either side, I can guarantee you that they'll be the same. So let's see, you know, 20.49, 20.49. So that's one way, that's two ways there of getting the midpoint. The measurement tool can be really useful. So if you want it, just offset a little bit. Let's say you want it offset by 3.26 there. You can measure that out with a measuring tool. You can click on it, your guide point, and you can build that. Now let's say you're building an entire level in SketchUp, because Google SketchUp is fantastic for architecture. Let's say you're building a level, you want all of your doors to be 10 meters wide. You can use the pencil tool to find 10 meters on every single wall that's gonna have a doorway in it. So let's just go with that for now. And then you can, you know, get your 10 centimeters, 10 meters right on every single wall. So the measurement tools just basically there to uh, help you keep everything uh, in order, everything the same, because you don't want one doorway that's like two meters wide and then the next one, you know, nine miles wide. So the tool there is really good. Now, this is a tool that I've started using recently. So if I've got, if I've got, uh, let's go ahead and separate this up into two sections. If I'm building a level, which I've started doing in Sketch now, building my levels in here, I may want to just leave myself notes. Now, these don't appear in Engine. These only, if you were to export this to a real Engine 4, you wouldn't see these notes. You'd only see these within Google SketchUp. So if I'm going to drag a note off here, I'm going to say this is going to be a bedroom. Oh, if I could spell bedroom. There we go. And I want to say, okay, this is going to be a kitchen. And you know that you can leave these notes out. So let's say you're working on a massive project. You can label everything up. And if you want to think, oh yeah, okay, maybe I could do with you know just tweaking something up in the bedroom a bit. Maybe I want to make the uh, make some stairs or something in there. I don't know. You know, then you can you can locate the bedroom that way. And to to remove them, you know, just grab the erase tool. Texturing. I'm probably going to do an entire video on texturing because texturing is quite a um, interesting thing to cover um basically there's a texture tool here like i said i'll just i'll go into it in more detail later on uh but you can see that we've put bricks on there and the problem is that if you put this in engine now and you apply your own brick texture it's going to be tiny because these bricks on it are tiny um so we'll talk about scaling and all that kind of stuff in a future video but that there is the uh, material tool this pan and uh, rotate here you know, we've already talked about using the shortcuts for those on your middle mouse button and holding shift with it. You can zoom in with scroll or you can, uh, I don't even know what this tool does, but I'm assuming it's a zoom tool. Um, a great thing about Google SketchUp is the community on it. Now, 3D models, right? I mean, you've got 3D modeling software, but you can bring in other people's models that are free to use. So let's say here, wow, okay, some of these are good. <laughs> some of these are really good I mean you could build an entire map off what other people have made but you know where's the fun in that let's say I want this table here I load this and I can put this table in now now I've got now this not got, blah, 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 sorry I've now got this table in my world so let's say I'm building a house and you know I want to put some furniture in it that's going to be part of the part of the uh, part of the thing and I can it's quite awkward to use really but um, you can Basically, I've demonstrated that you can you can bring other people's models into your uh, your thing. Now you can't adjust them as such. Like if I wanted to say, okay, I'd like this piece of wood at the end here to extend out more, I can't go and grab that and move that along because it's not it's already been compressed down into like a kind of single object. But as a as a whole object, I can scale it. So if I said, okay, I want the table to be shorter, I want it to be like this, or I want it to be taller. I can go ahead and scale it, but I can't edit it, really. Um, so I'm going to leave that there for that video. It's been a little bit longer than I expected, uh, but that's basically gone over SketchUp, what, how you use some of the really basic stuff in there, the tools, where everything is. Make sure you set that styles up as soon as you get into SketchUp. Trust me, the amount of, before I understood how to change the color of that, the amount of times I'd build a really cool model, put it in a real engine, and then... I can just see through every single wall because all the faces are reversed. I have to go around to each one, right click, reverse face, load it back into the engine, did it do it right? You know, it's a pain in the ass. So go ahead, head into Windows, Styles, get that color set to something really, really obvious, a bright red. I always use bright red. It's so obvious which one's the wrong one then. Um, so yeah, quickly gonna wrap that up there for the video. I'll hop into, I'll, 
upload this and then I'm going to upload a separate video right after this and we're going to go ahead and start making some really simple models, getting used to the push-pull tool, moving things around. Um, so stay tuned for that video guys and as always if you like the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you